Construction of the M2PP Expressway has seen a story once hidden in the Kapiti Sands come to life through archaeology. We have got information now on the archaeology of the coast that we simply never had before. So for me that's been one of the really exciting aspects of this project. We're telling a whole new story. To me, you know, after seeing a lot of things on this coast, working with uh, Mary and, and, and others, how's all going to change what we thought. Around 200 new sites were recorded as part of the M2PP earthworks. Before the construction earthworks even started, I contracted a bunch of colleagues from Otago University to come up and do a whole lot of archaeology on the expressway route, what we refer to as the high level phase. And so these were very, very experienced archaeologists who looked at my predictive model of where sites were probably going to be and we did some testing in those places and sure enough sites turned up. Iwi monitor Danny Mullen used his knowledge of tikanga Māori to help find many of these pre-European sites. Well, because I've been a hunter and gatherer all my life as well, I know where they walk, I know why they'll walk there, why they'll sit there, like, you know, they're out of the wind having a kai or whatever, it's close to water. The majority of sites are shell middens, which are in effect rubbish heaps. And some were deep and some weren't, some were down seven metres, which told us that's how much the sand moved over all those years. Some of these shell mittens are really big, you know, 80, 90 square metres. So this is not just mum, dad and the kids sitting on a sand dune having afternoon tea and enjoying the view. This is the equivalent of a factory floor. Processing the shellfish there, but also taking advantage of the wetlands to get eels and birds, but especially the flax that would have been there weaving kete to carry all the stuff away in. This area we're standing in right now is north of Timoana Road. This is also where the majority of archaeological sites were, uh, in these very high dunes that you can see behind us. So this was the pattern right along this whole strip between Timoana Road and Arara Road. Really high sand dunes with wetlands, swales between them. You had the, the little walker, you could go anywhere in, yep. the, in, in the wetlands, just yep. hole, you know? You'd sort of just zip in and out through these wetlands. Yeah. and. Through the uh, testing we've done through the Expressway Earthworks, we know that these wetlands were all over the place because we can see the geomorphological evidence of them. We've also found some really wonderful artefacts. It's very much a theme of little objects can tell big stories because these are tiny little objects in their own right, but they, yeah, they tell wonderful stories. Some of the tiny bits and pieces we're finding, that is, of course, as any fisherman will recognise a fish vertebrae, but the point is to analyse what kind of fish, what species of fish were they doing onshore or offshore fishing. This is a piece of obsidian, volcanic glass. Obsidian is a really popular tool with pre-European Māori because as glass it has an incredibly sharp edge. And this is a rat jaw, the Polynesian rat was another food animal that the Polynesians brought to New Zealand with them. So finding this kind of animal is really exciting in an archaeological site. So with that micro story, we're then able to further analyse what were people eating, why were they eating it, how does it compare with resources that are out there today, is there any difference, so what can it tell us about paleo environment? Uh, you know, it can start feeding into big picture aspects like climate change, future planning for Kapiti Coast District Council, or have there been seismic events, there's all sorts of possibilities. So again, this theme of tiny little things can tell big stories. Well, you build up a picture in your mind of actually what went on here. Yeah, I know where all the big snapper are now because we found all the big snapper bones somewhere else, yeah. not here, and I ain't telling you.